It had a large, ugly nose with oily skin and rancid breath. And creative powers that could not be matched. That's right, it's me here with another session of drawing monsters exactly as they're described from the books. But not everything's scary. Some things are just happy and wonderful, like the fact that my Pro Sketch Pack is back by popular demand. I always feel guilty when people say they missed out, and I do do these as limited runs, but we put so much work into the case, into the sketchbooks, into all these custom elements, and not only is it all so special and well-crafted, but so foundational, like sketching is the gateway to your artistic journey, that I decided to bring it back and it's here to stay. So you can go check it out at prosketchback.com. You will have plenty of time to go get a hold of one. And if it was a little tight on your budget, the split payments are also still here. So you can get over $200 worth of professional grade and beautifully presented art materials that will last you many years in the future for only $99. And you can break that down even further with a split payment. Link in the description. And if you're curious about it and you haven't seen it before, you'll see me use it in this video. So let's get started with monster description numero uno. Monster description number one. Ah, ah, ah. An extremely small dragon the size of a dashan? Dash, a dash, those little, the little sausage dogs. A flickering forked tongue, very pink gums, and no tooth. Enormous. Innocent, grass green eyes with absurdly long eyelashes, prickly spines, and it is deep emerald green in color, fading to a shimmering pearl on his tummy like a mackerel, lightly sprinkled with pale brown freckles. Okay, I'm not gonna guess. I'm just gonna draw. Now, as a visual thinker, I like to put down a few quick visual references to sort of anchor myself to. And being described as a small dragon the size of a dashand, Dashand is, I don't know how to say it. Anyways, I did a quick scribble of both of those things next to each other, and I'm excited where this is going. Let's move on to some of the face details. Being described as having no teeth, very pink gums, and a flickering forked tongue, there's a bit of emphasis on the mouth here, so we need to make sure that there's definitely some visual space for that. But it goes on to describe enormous, innocent, grass green eyes. So I just drew the side profile of a dragon and slowly grew those eyes to become eventually enormous, innocent eyes. And it's at this point that I need a few more visual references. I know roughly what a dragon looks like when I make a dragon, but I Google imaged a picture of a happy dashand, which I used as a foundation to sort of start sketching what the face might look like if I was using a, a dashand as a reference. When it really started to come together was when I mixed that with pictures of happy lizards. There are really cute happy lizards out there and there are some design elements that you're probably gonna recognize. Some flatter, wider faces that, let's say, whatever else uh, created a depiction of this character that I'm depicting, I'm seeing crossover here with this lizard look. It was also useful to see that there are some of these cute little lizards with what look like eyelashes, but they're not made of hair, they're made of spikes, which had me stuck for a little bit. But seeing that you can literally have spike eyelashes, well, that sort of solved that problem for me. Then moving on to color with the skin described as emerald green fading to a shimmering pearl. I'm gonna have to smack a bit of color in our final piece here because there's a lot of visual descriptions that include color that tells me this is gonna be bright and happy and colorful especially with these sort of proportions and quirky features. So it's time to move on to a polished depiction, this time over to my mixed media sketchbook, where I lay down a sketch using all of the elements that I've discovered and worked my way through with my rough sketching. With the rough proportions in place, I'm gonna come through and do line work later, but I need to put down the foundation of all the colors first. And I thought I'd go for a bit of a storybook feel working with watercolors to create some really nice textures and soft, cloudy aesthetic. I feel like there's a fun, innocent story being told here with this monster. The basic skin tones down, I tried to create a little bit more layering and add some shadows and slowly adding some of the more vibrant areas like the eyes and gums, grass, and well, the rest of the piece. With all the color laid down and dried, it's time to move on to the final touches of line work. 
using my trusty flex liner to smack out some nice line weight variation on what feels like a really cute innocent monster. A dragon with the size and proportions and demeanor of a dachshund. I'm really happy with my result. Of course, I'm gonna eat my shoe if it's not toothless from How to Train Your Dragon. However, I'm pretty happy with how I was able to create a design that I feel was genuinely based on the prompts and not my memory of what toothless looks like. And it's toothless, but we're in totally different places. And I have to say, based on the descriptions, that's way off. I mean, I get it. If if uh, Hiccup had to ride Toothless and how to train the dragon, it's gotta be bigger, not the size of a dachshund, but I like my Toothless. So now we are on to description number two. Now this one, as I've been told, is the one that I didn't do in the last episode because I shared it with you. So let's refresh ourselves. High fantasy, eight to 10 feet tall, human-like face with animal snout, ears and horns, or bird of prey speak in crest of feathers instead of hair, coarse dark hair, Hair, not fur, oversized human hands, hooves, wearing dark leather, long shirt of black, chain mouse, bike dax, hook spear or scythe. There's so much in there and I have no idea what it is or what it's meant to look like, but many of you have depicted it. I can't wait to see what you did, but I don't want to be influenced by it. So I'm going to draw mine and then we're going to check out the community entries and of course, pick a couple of prize winners. Now this one is a real mishmash. There feels like there's a lot of elements here and the first thing I need to do is just put a bunch of it down to sort of see where I end up. And starting off, there's an ore. So using a human face, because I'm drawing a human-like face, the first ore is a monster with an animal snout, ears and horns, or the second one, bird of prey's beak and a crest of feathers instead of hair. Now, I always find this interesting. It tells me that there were a few written depictions of this sort of monster, the way they were described in the world or setting that they became known in, was vague or like it was seen by different people who had different recollections of the same creature. And with that being the case, I'd try and combine pretty much everything and be put together in a way that one person might describe them like that first animal snout ears and horns way and someone else might describe it with the bird of prey's beak and crest of feathers. So as you can see, played around with different faces and got a few ideas that I thought were working and it was time to move on to the body. The hair thing's a bit weird because it says coarse dark hair but not fur but I'm not sure like I mean where does that go if it's not is it just long fur that makes it hair not fur I'm not sure but if a creature has hooves they're gonna have goat like legs in my mind but this monster is more humanoid than a lot of other monsters I mean they have an outfit and props once again we have another ore there's a spiked axe hook spear or scythe like curved sword and again I like to have my cake and eat it too so I decided to slap them all together on a character that started to feel to me like a video game monster, something in the Warcraft universe, or even a legendary monster enemy in Valheim or something. I did a bit of a base sketch in my red pencil, which to me adds a bit of a, a tone and a hue throughout the whole piece that will give it this ominous feel. So moving on to my refined piece, it's a matter of getting the pose and proportions and scale put together in a way that feels dramatic and epic. Obviously everything's been mostly roughed in. I'm gonna move on to my felt liner, adding a bunch of details, accentuating different areas and slowly but surely bringing my monster to life. As the piece was coming together, I wanted to add some elements of polish, specifically a really sharp and bold outline all around the piece in a really strong brush pen. This makes it feel like video game concept art and really helps differentiate the different areas of the silhouette. A few elements of polish or shading added here or there, but altogether this piece was really coming together and I feel like I certainly can see the monster, even with all those elements as he was described. So, 
I don't know. If I were to guess, I'm gonna say something more historical, maybe something like mythical or legendary. I don't know, what's, what's the reveal? A Trolloc from the Wheel of Time series. <gasps> That's really cool. I like it. Yay. <laughs> I like my Trolloc, but I need to see your Trollocs. And we're going to pick a couple of winners who will receive a Pro Sketch Pack. So Trina, that looks so cool. Again, uh, someone who's tried to incorporate quite a lot of those descriptive features. Whoa, Ray, <laughs> that's brutal. Hayden Creation, oh, that's cool. So you went more with the beak design. Again, it, it looks really good put together. Genuinely legendary, very nice. And a bit more of that Minotaur vibe. So you sort of had that same inclination that I had. Jonathan James, that's cool. Nikki, getting creative there, really constructing all your different uh, ideas. EGA, you tried. Hey, look at that. I love that. I love the bone side thing. That's sick. Kieran Nettie. Whoa, that's intense. That feels like an anime super villain monster thing. <laughs> Teresa Ramos. Ooh, very nice. Much more humanoid Trolloc. Like here's Alex. It's like, I feel like everyone has really followed that prompt and trying to do the same process that I go through. Grebo Azza, look at that. That's sick. I love that cave environment. NB, your guess was a minotaur, which is interesting because you didn't draw a minotaur again. You stuck to the prompts. Well done. Whoa, Yosh Philly, that is sick. Missy Kiho, man, look at you go. Bloody legend. Oh, and Daniel Stevens, man, look at that. I love that with this fallen warrior there for scale so we can see eight to 10 feet tall. <laughs> Chippy Trolloc. Ah, oh, this is so good. And Rosie, look at that. Again, like th there was nothing that described something muscular or thin and seeing this depiction is really cool. There are so many awesome entries. I can't fit them all in this video, but go check them out. The hashtag is still there and all of the beautiful artworks are there. Thank you everyone who has entered. I'm also limited on how many people I can pick, but I have two people who are going to win the Pro Sketch Pack. Let's start off with a couple of honorable mentions. Adita 47 did a really cool design, really well thought out, an awesome final sketch with a cool pose. And Teresa R's piece was really cool, especially for a 15 year old, really well thought out. I loved the masked approach. Finally, we have our two winners, starting off with La Citrana Jen, who not only documented an awesome array of thought out sketches, brainstorming the process, but also produced a really epic final piece, and of course shared that whole process. And last but not least, it's freaking gross one with their piece, which is freaking gross, gross, cool. Gross is in like good piece, it's good. This is really cool, I love the epic vibe, and it's so different to a lot of the other entries, all in all, really well thought out and brilliantly executed. Congratulations to our two winners. I'll reach out to you on Twitter to get the details to send you your brand new pro sketch back. Oh, it's freaking Ross. No, it's not freaking gross. Sorry, Ross. Congratulations to our winners who will be receiving my pro sketch back with two custom premium paper sketchbooks with your embossed black dry medium sketchbook and the colorful spiral bound mixed medium sketchbook. A set of seven of the best pens you'll ever use in your life, five professional alcohol markers for your concept art shading, mechanical pencil and clutch pencil for all your scribbling needs, three color pencils, two water soluble graphite white pencil and all other bits and bobs. But of course it's not complete without the beautifully embossed case to hold it all in so you can travel and protect your art, crack it out and sketch wherever you want, whenever you want. This is all valued at over $200 and available for only $99 at prosketchback.com. Go check it out, it's a direct support to the channel and it's here to stay. Take your art to the next level with a Pro Sketch Pack available with a link in the description. All right, moving on to monster description number three. Horse-like reptilian creature. Usually wouldn't pair those together. Here we are. Black skin clinging to visible skeleton. Dragonish head. Is that used in the book or whatever it was written in? Like a dragonish head? White eyes with no pupils, black leathery wings. Interesting. Okay, but let's see, let's see where we end up. Now this one's interesting. There's not a lot here, but what there is makes it fairly clear as to what it should look like visually. There's three visual reference when it comes to the head of this creature. A horse, a reptile, and a dragon. Horse-like 
and dragonish. Aside from that, with the visible skeleton element being a key component, I started to, using a horse head skull as a foundation, try and combine these elements into a head that felt a little bit like all three, including the black skin clinging to that visible skeleton, the white eyes with no pupils, the only other thing that we're given that is a descriptor, a black leathery wings. So with that, I have to fill in the gaps. The body is gonna be the body of a horse with torn and clinging black flesh. And it's gonna be more horse-like than anything. It's just gonna have elements of reptile and dragon alluded to. But whatever this creature is, it feels very deathly. So I'm gonna lean hard in that direction. Moving pretty quickly on to my refined sketch because sometimes you don't need to do a lot of rough sketching and exploration to find the direction. Sometimes you know exactly where you're going. So the first order of business of course, laying down that solid foundation for me to work from. But in this case, I'm keeping things pretty loose. Aside from making sure I get the proportions right, all of the details are gonna be quite scraggly, rough and textured because that is gonna work for the aesthetic that I'm going for. Now that we move on to the line work with the pose that I'm happy with, this is where I stay rough and work with a fine pen, but slowly work in texture as I go, alluding to torn muscles being revealed underneath torn flesh, indicating the stretching aesthetic of where the skin is being pulled, and sometimes literally just drawing hanging flesh that had been torn off of this creature's body. Maybe it's just falling apart. Maybe it's been resurrected or it's coming back to life or it refuses to die. I have no idea what this creature is, except that it feels very zombie-like and quite gloomy dark. I'm loving the vibe of this so far with all that line work in, but this is really going to come to life with a bit of shading, especially with being described as having black skin. I use my brown and gray markers to sort of create a mottled effect that's going to make it look nice and decrepit and decaying and also help add a lot of depth to my piece. Now this could be called done, but I feel like there's something missing atmospherically. So to create a really cool smoky, wispy effect, I use my liquid graphite in the Pro Sketch Pack to roughly sketch in where plumes of smoke will be billowing out from the flesh of this creature. And then using the water pen included, start mixing it around and creating cloudy effects. And this really works well to make it look like the, the flesh is almost heated and burning as this creature walks forward. And that was the finishing touch my piece needed to make this demonic horse dragon zombie really feel complete. I really love this one. This is up there with one of my favorites. It's just the mood feels so cool. Now, I got a guess, and my guess is those things from Harry Potter, the things that only people who have seen a dead person see, the horse things, is it? It is, the Thestral. Thestral, that's what they're called. I forgot they were called. I also forgot what they look like. I feel like mine is what they would have looked like if the Harry Potter series were filmed more in the style of Game of Thrones. It's <laughs> just a lot more dark. <laughs> Anyways, that'll do for this video. Leave your suggestions in the comments for future characters and the monsters. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.